In this session, I'm going to take you through the process of identifying business outcomes. And actually, what I have found is that, for in my own experience and in working with other customers, is that getting to these business outcomes is really the hardest part of this process. And the reason for that is that we as data professionals, for the most part, are used to thinking in data outcomes. You know, we use words like, we want to improve data quality. We want to uh, build the dashboard. We want to install uh, master data governance. And while those are great data words and data capabilities, those are not the business outcomes that matter. And so first and foremost, you have to get into this business outcome mentality, not just for the data strategy champion that we talked about that's going to lead this, this, this uh, strategy session, but also the members of the team who are going to have to participate. And the best way I find to do that is to go do the work and do some research. And that's why I asked you in the previous session to go back and, and do some investigation. And hopefully you've done your homework. You've looked at your company's external website. You've looked at the business model canvas and you've investigated that if that's available for your company on the web. And if it's not available, looking at all those dimensions that are in that template and trying to answer those questions on your own. As well as looking at the context map canvas because that's a great template to help you identify your external drivers, your, your rules and regulations, your environment, your competitive landscape. So with all of that as back, background, you're now ready to go into the process of identifying business outcomes. So I'm sure that with the homework that I gave you, already you know more about your, com your company than you did before you started the session. And actually what I find is being able to talk the, biz the language of business and being more business knowledgeable is going to help you tremendously as you have your conversations with your business stakeholders and your executives. And it will help you to drive the conversations in the workshops on how to target business outcomes. So you looked at all those documents as homework, but now I'm going to walk you through other documents, public documents, that your company is also using as a way to communicate their outcomes. And I actually find that these documents um, will spell out those business outcomes. Sometimes they don't use exactly business outcome words, and I'll take you through some examples of, of typical business outcome language. But they will give you an opportunity to set that initial draft of business outcomes on your own prior to these workshops. So the public documents that I like to use are documents like your annual report your 10K earning reports, uh, maybe some interviews that your senior execu executives have made um, publicly to the press or in articles. All of these written documents and verbal documents are a great source for business outcomes again. And the reason, another great reason for using these documents is that they're using the words your company itself is using, right? And it's hard to debate those outcomes than when you get into the workshop mode. So now what I want to talk about is what are business outcomes to look for, right? And like I said, sometimes the documents and the interviews will be very clear and will use those exact words, business outcomes or business goals. But sometimes they don't, so you have to know what to look for. Now what I find is business outcomes are usually um, actions, uh, they are measurable, they are result oriented, and they're quantifiable. And they come in various categories. So business outcomes could be financial outcomes. They could be operational outcomes. They could be a customer outcome. They could be a technical outcome. Um, and I also like to look at uh, those outcomes which you know inher inherently will be data rich for which having a business outcome driven data strategy is really going to be a key part of the success. So let's look at some examples. So one kind of business outcome is when company makes statements around cost or operational efficiencies, especially if they state a cost savings number 
or a, a margin improvement number. You know, just recently SAP in its last uh, quarterly report identified a improvement target for margins. In those cases where these targets have been communicated, you know that that's going to lead to process efficiencies and that in turn will lead to data efficiencies and data um, strategy elements that need to be incorporated. So that's one great example. Another kind of business outcome is um, when companies state that they're improving customer experiences through digitization or digitizing the supply chain. These, this is also gonna require a tremendous amount of transformation of the processes to make them more automated, usually to make them more innovative, to make them um, more even customized. And in that case, again, you'll see that data is going to be a very important part of, that, uh, of changing those processes. So that's another great example. Uh, a third great example is when the company is communicating its goals to change its a business model. Let's say, for example, in the case of SAP, where we are going from license revenue to a cloud subscription. That's a change in a business model. Business model could also mean your pricing is changing from being fixed price to being a flexible pricing structure, right? You can also um, increase or change the markets that you serve. Maybe you're entering new markets with your same products and services, or you're going to add different products and services and new markets to your existing customers. That's another example. Again, in those cases, you're going to need a fair amount of, of data to get into these new areas. And so an effective data strategy is going to also be required. You know, there's also, sometimes companies say that they want to grow through acquisition. And as in the case of SAP, where we had also a, a quite a bit of growth through acquisition, there's a, a whole series of data management capabilities that are going to have to be built. So those are, are also great business outcomes that will be relevant for a data strategy. And finally, when the company makes statements about improving profitability, they could be improving profitability in, across the whole company, in certain markets, in certain countries, or for certain products. Um, again, if you're driving toward profitability, that's going to also require uh, possibly new models for your data, new pricing, and a significant amount of data changes to go along with it. So see, I've given you already five different kinds of business outcomes that you can be looking for and listening for as you read these documents and listen to what your company is saying publicly about where they want to go. Get your hands on all of these documents. They usually are readily available either on the web, Googling your company, um, or usually on your website. There's usually a section of in investor relations that will um, have a lot of these key documents, so look for those. But don't get overwhelmed. We're not asking you to read every single page of the annual report. Uh, of course, unless you like to read financial statements and balance sheets and you know, go after that. But uh, really, there are some key sections in each one of those, of those documents that will hold those business outcome words. So let's look at in the annual report. Really important, look at your CEO letter. That's the introduction that the CEO will make, usually at the beginning of the report to their stakeholders. Um, it will summarize your, uh, the, the findings and the performance for uh, that year, uh, but also talk about the mission and the goals and the outlook for the future. So that's one great source. Um, if you're looking at the 10K, there's always a section on management discussion and a section on risk. Those will all also be pointing out the key areas that your senior managers are maybe concerned about and, um, and areas where uh, they're looking to improve. And then you pick up the transcripts of your uh, different investor calls. Uh, and uh, again, also any interviews that your CEO or other key executives may be making in, in the public, right? So let me give you a couple of examples. I just pulled a few uh, that I think are really um, instrumental here and that will we'll make the point. Uh, so 
let's look at the SAP one, right? We just re released our uh, quarterly report, and in that report, here's the quotes that we used. We said, we want to accelerate operational excellence across all functional areas of SAP with a focus on growth, innovation, and efficiency. We want to deliver an average one percentage point of operating margin expansion per year from 2018 through 2023. And the achievement of this margin is critical for our long-term success. Wow, that was a lot um, and made very specific commitments in terms of cost um, and improvement areas, which will stem process uh, optimization, which will then require a great data management strategy. I pulled another one that also would make a, a similar point. So in terms of cost, uh, we are on track to deliver targeted annualized cost savings of 100 million in 2019 and in excess of 200 million by the end of fiscal 20. And we continue to take a hard look at how we operate even more efficiently. Again, those are business outcome words used for the goal of operational efficiency with a very measurable target. Again, another great uh, statement on uh, that will be a business outcome in your strategy. So as homework for you, now that you've got those two examples, go back and look at those documents um, that I reference and see how many business outcomes you can pick out from those documents and from those transcripts and also see if you can hear, if you can look for the ones that are going to be most data rich and that will have a dependency, a high dependency on a business outcome data strategy.